But the guest that we have today is Stephen Hawk. I've known Stephen for many years. Uh, Stephen runs a website called winenirvana.com. And he produces blogs. He's recently gotten into producing podcasts. Uh, Stephen also writes the wine column for Gulf Chicago Magazine, and that's located at the back of every issue. So joining us today, uh, Stephen Hawk, we're, 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 we're talking about different topics that we could discuss and uh, noticed the, the stemware behind you. So I don't know if you'd like to introduce yourself, maybe talk about you, how you got into wine, you know, things that we could talk about in the future series, but, and where we'll go today. You know, I am a, uh, a longtime wine enthusiast. You know, I started, uh, I started drinking wine in my mid, in my mid twenties and have pursued it as basically as a hobby, uh, ever since then. And that has, that has now grown into, uh, the, uh, the blog and the wine column. Yep. So, uh, yeah, basically a longtime wine fan who's, who's become a, uh, I like to think something of an authority. Very for good. the yeah and and, and winerbonner.com is uh the focus is on the casual wine drinker i don't get into you know i review i review wines there are uh hundreds of, of posts now all kinds of wines uh some spirits as well what i don't do is i talk about wines i talk about the producers i don't I don't get into, there's no numerical ratings. There's no star okay. ratings. There's no judgments, no, no scoring. No judgments, no scoring. And you know, one of the things that, that strikes me, the wine enthusiast, right? Very big, very popular uh, wine magazine. Also the wine spectator. Well, in, in the enthusiast, I think the spectator as well, they both have a hundred point scale. Well, if you actually pick up one of those magazines, you won't find, you will not find a wine that has an a, a 85 no. No, no. Or, or, or below. Yeah. yeah. So, so, what, so with that, what's the point of a hundred point yeah. scale? And if you read some of these reviews, you know, a, a 95 point Cabernet and a 96 point Cabernet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's always struck me that it seems like that kind of palate refinement is, is nearly impossible. Yeah. Right. And I don't think those numbers are helpful for people either. And it makes them feel guilty. Right. It's great for producers because, you know, if they can hit and they're always looking for a 90 point score, you know, a 90 point score is worth real money mm -hmm. to producers because they can charge more for a, a 90 point wine. They can probably sell <clears throat> for 10 or 15% more than an 89 point wine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's great for them. But is that great for the consumer? I, I don't think so. Okay. Quite frankly. So, and then there's also personal taste. That's the whole other topic we, that we're going to get into hopefully. Yeah. So hence, yeah. Hence the, the casual wine drinker for sure. So behind me, a yes. bunch of wine glasses. Yes. Back in probably, I think it was about 25 years ago. May, may have been 30 by now. There's an Austrian company called Riedel, R-E-I-D-E-L. <clears throat> They've been making glassware for a long time. And they determined that the shape of a, of a wine glass could influence the taste and enjoyment of the wine. And so they have come up with many shapes of wine glasses. Some say they've gone, some say they've gone too far and that you don't need a bunch of wine glasses. I personally think a few well-chosen glasses makes a lot of sense. I think it makes, I think it does make the wine taste better. And I think it enhances the enjoyment of the wine as well. So let me show you some of what's going on. This is, this is the, this is really the work, the workhorse glass right here. Right. This is a glass that you would use for um, Cabernet Sauvignon, for Merlot, uh, for a number of uh, uh, for a number of Burgundies. That be Bordeaux. Like that. Is that a Bordeaux glass also, or is that? It's also yeah. Yep. Actually, it would be a Bordeaux glass rather yep. than Burgundy glass. It is a Bordeaux glass. Yep. So, yeah. So yeah. And that is usually what you would say would be what you'd see on a dinner table as the biggest bowl of a glass, as as a most most volume, most air inside of it. Correct. <laughs> Uh, correct. And in most restaurants, if, uh, if they, if they have, you know, nice stemware, not yep. all of them do, of course, it, yep. this is the kind of glass that you're going to be seeing. Okay. Um, most of the time it is, um, it's about eight inches tall. 
Okay. Uh, maybe two and a half inches around. So this is a glass because most of what I drink is red wine. This is a glass I probably use 80% of the time. Yep. You so, could, if you could only afford one glass. This that's, is that's, that's, that. that was my question that I was going to go, is if you're going to start with stemware and you'd like to buy something nice, a set of four, a set of eight, whatever that might be, that's your recommendation is to start with a Bordeaux glass, a cab glass. Absolutely. Nice like that. Okay. Because, because it'll, also, it'll also work with white. Okay. Uh, in a, you know, in a pinch, it'll, it'll work with champagne, frankly. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that's, so that's that one. Another red, this one is, it's a, it's a little bit shorter, mm -hmm. a little bit shorter. It's rather narrower. So this is a wine for, uh, this is a glass for Zinvendel primarily. So the Zin glass. And then. So you're saying red Zin, just to be clear, correct? Would you say red zin? I would say red zin because white zin is an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> that's something else we. Hey, yeah, we've got fans. We, I'm sure we're going to have fans of white zin. Oh, oh I know. Watching. I know. We're, we're going to get grief for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, the comments will be flowing. They will. So this is a uh, uh, Syrah or Shiraz glass. It's much like we can do this. It's much like. It's much like the Cabernet, yep. but it's a little taller. Now, this is the kind of subtlety where people who poo-poo glassware would say, no, 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 you don't, you don't need a Syrah glass or yeah. a Shiraz glass. They're too similar, but they're there. Okay. And then we have, and this is a, and this is a, a Chardonnay glass, okay. right? yeah. which is a similar shape, but it's like a miniature version, right? So why would you say, so similar shape, similar shape glasses, do you, could you talk about the intention behind the purpose behind having a smaller glass with the same shape versus a larger glass? Is it just uh, let the, letting the wine breathe? Reds tend to be older, whites tend to be newer, just in terms of years that they were produced. Is that part of it? What goes into that? That's part of it. But, it, but Riedel's position is that the idea, like for instance, between, you know, two different yep. sizes like this, yep. that the... <laughs> in the act of drinking, okay, like this, yep. that the shape and the, and, the, and the size of the glass affects how the wine is conveyed onto your palate, Okay. right? Yep. So that the idea is that the a Chardonnay will land the wine on your tongue in a different place than, than, the, that, than that glass. Than glass. Okay, all right. Opening up, opening up the aroma. Uh, you know, the flavors, yeah. the whole bit. So that's the, that's the idea behind it. Got so, it. So there's that. Here we have a little, we have a little Sauvignon Blanc glass. Okay. It's much, it's much smaller, right? Yeah. It's the glass I use the least. I like Sauvignon Blancs, but um, I don't, it's tend I like them, but I don't drink them a lot. Tend to stick with reds. I tend to stick with reds. And then, and then this is a controversial thing. This is a, this is a champagne flute, right? This kind of stuff, stuff you'll see at any wedding celebration, right? Yep. There was a time where champagne glasses were, were, were the, the little bowl shaped things, right? Yeah. And they, they fell out of favor and correctly so, because the whole idea of, of champagne and champagne enjoyment is the bubbles, right? Yeah. That's a big part of that. Well, with a, with a wide bowl, those, those bubbles are more rapidly diffused, right? Yeah. And so you lose, you lose that sparkle, which is a big part of the, of champagne enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a flute is this concentrates the release of the bubbles, right? And so, so you get more of the effervescence to enjoy. Sure. sure. Uh, although there are some people who say, no, 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 this will work fine. No need for two glasses. Yeah. But my position is, you know, if you can afford a, a flute or two. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say just, just for myself, um, I would say the first, the first glasses and nice stemware that I invested in, were Bordeaux glasses, cab glasses, your big, the, the biggest ones, the first ones that you showed. And then also right. my, also my champagne flutes. So I did yeah. champagne flutes and I did the, the Bordeaux. Right. Yep. And then the, then the last one here, this is a Pinot Noir glass. Yep. And you can see the bowl here. Again, the bowl is much. Yes. Much more bowly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So this is the last one that I have. And these, um, like I say, I use all of these all the time, mostly the cab, but yeah, they, they all see, they all see work. And it's, um, I got these as a birthday present 20 years ago and they've been uh, extremely uh, enjoyable. So how many fallen, how many, how many, how many broken glasses have you had over the years? How many have you had to replace actually? Oh man, I would say at least half a dozen. I just, I just broke one of the cab glasses like yeah. a month ago, which is, which is a pain. And here's another thing about Riedel. The, the glasses that I've got, yep. these are all crystal. These are all Austrian crystal, but these are machine made. Um, um, which makes them affordable. Riedel does have, so this is the Venom line. They have a line called Sommelier line. Yep. It's hand-blown crystal. And I actually have a couple of <clears throat> hand-blown martini glasses. Yep. The, they are, they're exquisite, but they are expensive and they are fragile. Fragile, yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. So, so even as, as much as I love those glasses, I yep. can't really recommend them because, because to break one, it's, yeah, it's just, just yeah. it's heartbreaking. I mean, these things yeah. can run over a hundred dollars a piece, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, you don't want to be you don't want, you don't want to be breaking glasses like that. Yeah. And the shapes, actually, uh, in terms of the bowl shapes and everything, they're identical. It, it's really it's just the way the the, the glasses are made. So, like I say, oh, they're yeah. super they're super elegant, yeah. super expensive, yeah. uh, out of reach for really all but. Yeah. A few. Yeah, and that Riedel line, the Riedel line is great. That's what I have. I have Riedel glasses uh, or Riedel stemware. And then what I would say is any tips for, you know, people that happen to go out to Napa Valley, um, you will often find that when you pay for a tasting, you can take that glass. And oftentimes <laughs> they're Riedel glasses. I mean, it could be a Riedel mm -hmm. glass. And, and some, of the, yeah. some, some of the wineries will have really nice stemware. And I have a lot of um, different different glasses from different vineyards. And Granted, if you want consistency across your table or if you have people over, you can buy these. Yeah. I'll tell you, when you have a lot of people, it's nice to have those other glasses. Now, it it's kind of, you got to pack them well and make sure that you're bringing them back safely. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a, I've never had one bro break in a bag, but um, just for those that, um, that, uh, that, that will go to Napa or would like to go to this Napa. This is a very much an interest of mine. I'm very grateful to have uh, Stephen uh, and known Stephen for many years, and I'm happy that he's doing this video on a Saturday. Um, Stephen and I would like to continue the series. We'd like to talk about different things. We have topics that we would like to cover. Send those over to me. Um, share, share with me if there's something that you'd like to learn about, if there's different varietals you'd like more information on, um, what, whatever that might be. If there's, you know, how do you go about choosing a wine at a restaurant? How do you pair wines with different meats? Um, Stephen actually is a, a very good chef in his own right. So um, that's another thing that I know that he does blog about. Um, different meals that he cooks and the wines that he does uh, that he pairs with those. So Stephen, thank you again for joining on a Saturday. We'll, we'll conclude this session.